Hi, today we are going to read Upside Down Magic, Chapter 12. Upside Down Magic is written by Sarah Milanowski, Lauren Miracle, Emily Jenkins, and Chapter 12 begins on page 121. Upside Down Magic. On Monday, backs turned into a rock at the beginning of headstand practice, as usual. It was Nori's turn to take him to Nurse Riley, and as she pushed the wheelbarrow down the hall, she peered into other classrooms. It was the hour for magic study, and the fifth grade flares were roasting marshmallows in their hands. Their classroom smelled delicious. The fuzzy class stood in a circle around a large silver earl unicorn. They were grooming it and feeding it carrots. The fifth grade flyers were levitating two feet above the floor, slowly going around in a circle. Every now and then, one of them drooped lower or tipped backwards, and the teacher would blow a whistle. Young flyers were called early birds. Most of them wouldn't be able to go higher than five feet until high school. Andres was an exception, obviously. Andres could probably soar all the way to the moon if he wanted, but then what? He wouldn't be able to get back down. Nori walked on. She reached the medical office and said, We're here, to Bax, even though she wasn't sure he could hear her. Ah, Nurse Riley said, Headstand practice again? Nori passed over the handles of the wheelbarrow. Can I watch, please? Believe me, doll, this is something you don't want to see, Nurse Riley said. He shut the door. Nori took a different route back to Miss Starr's room. The Flickr classroom had a room full of kids staring at toads that hopped about on their desks. Begin, cried the teacher. Half the toads went invisible. The other half looked like they were missing various toad body parts. No feet, no face, no middle. It was actually kind of cool, Nori thought. The fifth grade fluxers were working on kittens. It wasn't a big class since fluxers were rare. There were only 10 students. Nori could see they were trying to add colors to their kitten transformations. Four were still just black, but five had white spots and one successfully calico. Luciana, stop looking out the window, the teacher chided. The squirrels aren't your concern. And Alistair, don't scratch the furniture. All of you, remember to keep control of the animal mind. Nori wanted more than anything to join them. When she got back to the classroom, everyone was still doing a hand headstand practice. Soothing music played. Miss Starr stood upright in the center of the carpet. Nori chose a spot beside Elliot. Elliot, she whispered. Hey, Elliot. He pretended not to hear her. Boys and girls, think about this, Miss Starr said. When you are upside down, the ceiling becomes the floor and the floor becomes the ceiling. Am I right? Boring, Marigold said under her breath. Fine, Miss Starr said, piercing Marigold with her gaze. But if you want to be the best you can be, this is how. She walked over and devoted herself to coaxing Andres into his position, proper bat position. I have a plan for us, Nori whispered. To, I have a plan for us, Nori whispered to Elliot. And I know you can hear me, so stop pretending. You're annoying me again, said Elliot. It's a good plan, said Nori. A plan to get us out of upside down magic. Elliot pressed his lips together. You and I are different than the others in our class, Nori whispered. We could do magic like normal people if we just got enough practice. Elliot did not stop her, didn't stop her, so Nori went on. If you can stop freezing things and I can stick to just regular animals, then we can transfer out of UDM. We can go to the normal classes. You skunk sprayed the Sparkies, said Elliot. I'm sorry. They were my best friends until that happened. Were they? Nori wondered. But she didn't want to say that to Elliot. Instead, she said, You can practice your flare talent, and I'll practice my flexing. We can help each other. If I were a regular flare, mused Elliot, maybe they'd like me again. We'll work on it, Nori whispered. You and me, after school. Elliot rolled out of his wobbly headstand and patted down his curls. Will Miss Starr let us leave this class? Will Principal Gonzalez? This was something Nori hadn't considered. Of course they will, she said. They have to. Do they? We can at least ask, can't we? Nori argued. They waited until the end of the school day. As soon as the other UDM kids left, they approached Miss Starr's desk. Yes, 
Miss Dar said, looking confused about why they were still there. She also looked tired, and Nori realized she was wearing her fourth change of clothes that day. We just wanted to say that you're really a good teacher, said Nori. And Andres and Willa and everyone, they're all nice. Right, Elliot? Elliot blinked. But Ellie and I, we're not the same. Elliot and I, we're not the same as the others in this class, Nori went on. We can do normal magic if we practice. They can't. Is that so, Miss Dar said. Yes, it is, but we need your help, so will you? Will I what? Nori stood up straighter. We want to be tested, please, to see if we can place into the regular fifth grade. Miss Dar's face fell. Why? Nori felt a pang. She hadn't meant to hurt Miss Dar's feelings. Because we don't want to be Wonkos, Elliot blurted. I hope no one is using that word here at Dunwiddle, Miss Dar said, frowning. If Elliot heard the tremble in Miss Dar's voice, he did not let on. We just want a chance to be normal, he said. Helping you to be normal isn't my job, Miss Dar said. Her expression was earnest. My job is to help you understand what you have to, what you have, and accept it. I am teaching you how to make the most of your talents. This class is where you belong because you have something unusual to offer. Please, begged Nori. Did you know that if the olden in the olden days unusual powers were prized? Miss Dar continued, powers like making rainstorms, creating ice, or seeing that no one seeing what no one else could see. Turning into co combination animals was considered beautiful. They used to think upside down magic was better than regular magic, Elliot asked. Some people thought it was better, just as now some people think it's worse. But I think it's just part of all the magic that's out there, said Miss Starr. I think Elliot and I can be normal, Nori argued. But what's normal? Miss Starr asked. It was only a century ago that people separated the powers into the five Fs, you know, it's very limited point. It's a very limited point of view. I believe there's no such thing as normal, and we all deserve respect, just as we are. All that was very nice, but Nori wanted to go home to her family. Please let us try, she pleaded again. Miss Star sighed. You want to test out of my class? Yes, said Nori. Elliot nodded. All right, Miss Star said at last. If it means that much to you, I'll ask Principal Gonzalez to evaluate you. Nori grinned wide. This time would be different from the big test. This time she would pass. And that's the end of chapter 12. Thanks for listening.